Namaste students. In this short lecture, we will understand the difference between efficiency and coefficient of performance, which is uh, related to in the which is basically in the context uh, context of uh, thermodynamics, a topic uh, which is encountered by those studying science physics in higher secondary level or in engineering courses in the first or sec second semesters. Right now. Before we try to understand this, we will take our model engine as Carnot's engine. It's, an, it's a heat engine. And the reason why we are considering Carnot's engine is, is simple to understand. And although we will not be discussing the cycles, uh, I assume that you already know that. Otherwise, you can simply uh, refer to the video that I, am, I have already created, the lecture on Carnot's theorem that is uh, that you will find the link for that in the description or the card will be flashing somewhere here. Now it's an ideal and a reversible engine. What is that? Ideal means there is no heat loss uh, due to any dissipation that is for friction or air resistance or something like that or deformation of the uh, system. Now, uh, reversible means uh, the engine can be used in reverse as a heat pump. So, let's understand how it actually works. The heat engine, which is in the normal mode, in normal mode, a heat engine takes heat, let's suppose QH amount of heat, from a higher temperature body TH, right, a constant temperature body at a higher temperature TH takes QH amount of heat. Now, rejects QL amount of heat to a low temperature, constant temperature body and in the process generates W amount of work. In this case, the efficiency eta is defined to be the, uh, defined to be the work delivered by the engine per unit heat taken from the source. That's the basic definition of efficiency. Now, if you have understood the Carnot's theorem, then you can also say that this is equal to 1 minus, since we know that the QH, because of uh, what do you call the first law of thermodynamics, the heat that it receives from the source will be equal to the work it does plus the heat it rejects, right? Now, according to that, W equals to uh, QH minus QL, or you can simply reduce that to uh, let me just uh, write it fully so that there is no gap in your learning. So, W can be written as QH minus QL from this equation and divided by QH. So, you can say that this is 1 minus QL by QH. Yes. Now, on the basis of Carnot's theorem, we have all also understood that efficiency of any engine will be less than or equal to the efficiency, uh, the ideal efficiency of an engine. And that means uh, your, uh, you know, the efficiency eta will be equal to less than or equal to 1 minus the ideal, uh, the ideal efficiency of any engine will be 1 minus TL by TH the sink temperature by 1 minus sink temperature by the source temperature, right? Now, that is not relevant in our discussion. We will mostly confine to the eta, the efficiency of an engine. Now, the engine has an efficiency eta, we know that, right? But what happens if I reverse this, the, the mode? Now, if I use it in reverse mode, what happens? Instead of taking heat from the heat source now, what it takes is it takes heat QL from a low temperature body, which is at a constant temperature TL. Then it supplies QH amount of heat to a high temperature body, which is at uh, a constant temperature TH. But since it is taking temperature from a low temperature body to a high temperature body, it cannot do it on its own spontaneously because of the second law, uh, yeah, the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the spontaneous process would involve, you know, taking heat only from a hot temperature, higher temperature body and rejecting some heat to the low temperature body. And in the process, when the heat flows spontaneously, it, you know, gets some work done. 
Now, for the reverse process to be done, you need to supply some heat in terms of electricity, in, uh, mostly, or in any other way. Right. For example, let's suppose you're talking about the air conditioner, right, which cools your, uh, what do you call, which cools down your room. Now, in this case, what happens, it takes heat from the room, which is already at a low temperature, to the surrounding, which is already at a high temperature. That's a cooling mode heat pump. But you can also use the heat pump or the reverse mode heat engine as a heating or a heater, for example, in cold countries or cold locations, right, where the room needs to be at a higher temperature than the surrounding, what it does is it takes heat from the external uh, surrounding, okay, and then supplies the heat to the room. In the process, of course, some electric electrical energy is given to the engine or the pump uh, as input work, right. So, in that, in the reverse mode, it's simple, right, when we simply talk about uh, heat engine and we simply re make it uh, work in reverse it becomes a heat pump and when I say heat pump in general by you know by default it means how much of heat it supplies that means heating mode or heater mode right or rather I will say it's heating mode, right? So, a heat engine gives you work as output. A heat pump gives you QH amount of heat as output. But if it's, in, if it's working in heating mode, it can also work in cooling mode. If it's working in cooling mode, then you focus on how much of heat QL as output. If it's heating, then it supplies heat to a high temperature body. If it's cooling, then it supplies, uh, it takes heat. Uh, basically, what it gives you is uh, it takes some heat from the cooling, uh, cooler uh, TL, uh, the colder body, right? So, let's understand this. There are two ways you can use the heat pump, uh, use the heat pump in heating as well as in cool, uh, cooling. Now, if you're talking, with, if you're not mentioning cooling, then by default, understand that, that the heat pump is now, must be taken uh, to be working in heating mode. But if you are specifically mentioning cooling, then of course, it will be behaving as something like a refrigerator or air conditioner, which is cooling down a room. Now, uh, when we talk about coefficient of performance, commonly known as COP, we give certain symbols. The general symbol alpha is used for cooling mode. Okay. The general symbol alpha is used for cooling mode. That's what you will find in most of the textbooks. Okay. But by definition, the coefficient of performance for heating, for heating mode, will be eta dash, which is equal to 1 by eta, if it's in heating mode. That means, the co coefficient of performance in heating mode will simply be the QH of the heat, amount of heat that it is supplying to the high temperature body for, for given, for unit amount of work it takes as input. Okay. See, that is equal to 1 by W by QH, isn't it? And W by QH is eta itself, right? We have already defined eta is W by QH. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, right? Clear? So, eta dash, which is simply the inverse of efficiency. The coefficient of performance is simply the inverse of co you know, efficiency in the normal mode of operation of an, of an ideal heat engine or any heat engine for that matter. Right. Now, if we focus, try to understand more about the heating mode coefficient of performance, or simply say COP co coefficient of performance, eta dash is equal to QH is nothing but QL plus W. Yes, divided by W, that is simply 1 plus QL by 1 plus QL by W. Yes or no? Note this, okay. Eta dash is 
So basically we know, let's write it here, eta dash is equal to 1 plus QL by W. Why I'm writing this? You will understand now. What is cooling mode coefficient of performance alpha? Now alpha is defined as QL divided by W. So that is, what is that? QL by W here. So basically that means QL by W equals to eta dash minus 1. Yes. So we can say that alpha that, that that is simply eta dash minus 1. Now alpha is eta dash minus 1, but I know that alpha eta dash is 1 by eta minus 1. That means 1 by eta is equal to 1 plus alpha. Hence, the relationship between efficiency and cooling mode coefficient of performance will be 1 by 1 plus alpha. Yes. Now understand, since we know that eta is always less than or equal to 1. That means eta dash is always greater than or equal to 1. That means what happens to alpha? Alpha. Alpha is nothing but eta dash minus 1. Eta dash minus 1 means it is all uh, if it is eta, eta dash is greater than or equal to 1, alpha is going to be less than or equal to uh, well, basically, if you do that, less than or equal to zero. Okay. So, that will be all then. Uh, will actually be, uh, well, one second. If, if eta dash is greater than or equal to one, okay, that will be greater than, no? It will be greater than or equal to zero. So, understand this. Alpha is a coefficient of cooling. Uh, performance in cooling mode, eta dash is the coefficient of performance in heating mode. In general, the general term for coefficient of performance is written as Q bar, uh, Q uh, mod by W, where Q mod is equal to QH in heating or QL in cooling. That's it. So, if you do, if you are an engineering student who needs to use that uh, the term coefficient of performance, be very careful uh, regarding the use of the heat pump. You need to understand if the heat pump is being used for heating or it is being used for cooling. So, if it is being used used for heating, then you need to use the term eta dash or inverse of a, uh, what you call. Uh, you can use that for inverse of efficiency, normal mode efficiency. And if you are using it in cooling mode, then that will be alpha. And given by the same formula, the formula I will summarize again, eta dash will be 1 by eta and alpha will be 1 by, well, uh, you can say that that's, uh, and eta will be 1 by 1 plus alpha, right? Now, if alpha is given, you can find eta. What if you are given with eta, you need to find alpha, it's you simply, you know, do that one by, it's simply alpha is equal to one by eta minus one. Okay, this is for heating. And this is for cooling. Now, the difference should be clear. Now, what happens if, if if simply a coefficient of performance is given, for example, for uh, 11th and 12th for higher secondary science students, physics students, if you're do dealing with thermodynamics, in this case, you will simply take the cooling, okay? For, if, if it's not a sophisticated course, not engineering, it's simply a normal standard uh, high school physics course and you're dealing with thermodynamics concepts of cool, you know, someone asks you what is coefficient of performance, you simply take alpha as 1 by eta minus 1. That would be sufficient, okay? But if it's a little bit sophisticated advanced course and as an engineering, then be sure that you're using this uh, main definition as coefficient of performance to be mod of Q divided by W. That's it. So, see you in the next lecture. Till then, uh, take care. And keep learning, stay happy. Bye-bye.